Hello everyone, this is Pastor Shannon from Abalachi Shows Missionary Baptist Church, where we are one in the spirit. We come today to give you a message and we pray that it will give you a inspirational heart to know that we serve a God that cannot and will not fail. Hello once again, uh, this is Pastor Shannon. Uh, we will uh, go straight to our uh, word and I pray that you would have your Bibles. If you could meet me in the book of the Second Chronicle, the Old Testament writings in Second Chronicle. And when you get there, go down to the 20th chapter. We'll start at Second Chronicle, the 20th chapter. And then when you get to the 20th chapter, we pray that you will go to the 13th verse. And so when you're at the 13th verse, you will find these words. And it reads, Then upon Yahzeriel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, the son of Jeel, the son of Mattaniah, a Levite of the sons of Asaph, came the Spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. And he said, Hear ye all Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, and thou King Jehoshaphat, thus saith the Lord unto you, be not afraid nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude. For the battle is not yours, but God. Tomorrow go ye down against them. Behold, they come up by the cliff of Zid, and ye shall find them at the end of the wilderness in Jeruel. Ye shall not need to fight in this battle. Amen. Let me say this again. You should not need to fight in this battle. And it said that the Lord is before them. And it said that they worship the Lord. Amen. And it talked about, and Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground, and all Judah and the inhabitant of Jerusalem fell before the Lord and worshiped the Lord. Amen. Now skip uh, down to verse 22, and it reads, and says, and they began to sing and to praise the Lord, set ambushes against the children of Ammonon, Moab, and Mount Seir, which were come against Judah, and they were smitten. Verse 23 says, For the children of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir, utterly to slay and destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitant of Syria, everyone helped to destroy another. And I want to stop right there because I believe that this will help someone today and to understand that we need to put our praise over our panic. Let me say this again. Our praise over our panic. In this pandemic season, uh, we have been exhausted uh, with information about our health, amen? And we are also observing demonstrations in our streets. And between the two of them, that's more than enough for mental frustration. Many are unsure, amen, about our nation providing us with truthful information about this COVID-19. And not only the COVID-19, but also the vaccination. And then I'm told that our election could end in a bad declaration. There is little faith to ensure we don't fall backwards while trying to lean forward. It is certainly a bad time in our nation. And we are in a domestic battle that resembles 
1861 and 1964 put together. Most of us would rather bury 2020 in the back of our minds because we feel that it's a year that has gone wrong. We have two a warring fraction, the extreme left and the extreme right. And if you throw in the gun violence, you have a nation in turmoil. And it's like what the children of, of Israel experienced when the two nations plotted against them to destroy the peace in Jerusalem. And when we look in the Bible for strength and answers, I come to tell you that the Lord is the right answer to a systemic problem. When we look at the reality of man's heart, it is evil that persists in war, fornication, and greed instead of need. I come to tell somebody today that we may not have an all out civil war, but we are certainly in a spiritual war. And if we're in a spiritual war, then we need to seek the one that can end it all. And I come to tell you, his name is Jehovah Shalom, the God of peace. And the best recipe for our nation in a struggle is to call on the Lord and watch what he can do. It doesn't matter who is in the White House, in the governor's mansion, or city hall. I come to tell somebody that your God is more powerful than all of them. Amen. And the best recipe that I found in a time like this is that we have to praise God from whom all blessings flow. In other words, we have to put our praise over our panic. In other words, if we put our best spiritual foot forward, we will find that the best way to address any given problem, trials or tribulation, is to praise God from whom all blessings flow. We have to stop asking God as though he is our genie in the bottle. And if you look at the prayer that Jesus gave his disciples, it started off with our Father, which art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. And, and hallowed be thy name. If you look at the word hallowed, you will notice that it means that we should render or acknowledge God's sovereignty. And we should understand that his holiness deserves to be separated from things unrighteous and thank him for providing a way out of the sick sin world. And the way that we can do it is through what God has already done for us. He offered his only begotten son and whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but shall have everlasting life. And if that's not good enough for you, I come to tell you that you need to learn how to praise him because the reason why you ought to praise him because he's given us life and life more abundantly. We have to praise him first for selecting his son for the service of our Messiah. And to help you out today, I, I want you to take heed to some of these scriptures because when you look at 2 Samuel, 7 and 26, it says, and thy, it says, and let thy name be magnified forever. And another verse put it this way. It says, for the rising of the sun, even unto the going down of the same, my name shall be great among the Gentiles and in every place, Malachi 1 and 11. And then it says in Luke 2 and 14, glory to God is in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill towards man. What I come to tell you, my sisters and brothers, is that if we want God to respond, then we should take note on how God operates when his people is in trouble. 
And then this passage of scripture, it's a perfect example how to get God attention for our nation. When you look at the historic theological message in this text, you will notice that all the children had to do was to praise God from whom all blessings flow. That's what I come to tell you, that if we are the children of God, we just need to know that we just need to be totally dependent on him. And many times for us, and this is our problem, we want to take matters and put them in our own hands. And the problem is that we don't know how to identify what solution is needed in our problems or uncertainties. And in the background of this text, the problem is that King, the king, he wanted to make uh, sure that he could uh, do this for himself. In other words, he wanted to take matters into his own hands. Sounds like something we're dealing with today. But I want to talk to you all. I want you to understand that he wanted to seek a physical solution to a spiritual problem. We want our nation to be healed, but yet we are trying to solve it with a two-party system. We really don't understand the underlying problem. It is driven by sin in the worst way because we are trying to rely on man. And if you're trying to rely on man, you need to understand that for we have all sinned and we all fall short of the glory of God. And I don't know about you, but I've come to trust in the Lord better than man. And this is what we need to look at in the text, because the king wanted to use someone that had sinned against the Lord. And when that person wanted to seek the prophets to give a good report, this king that already been sinning against the Lord, one who the king uh, 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 tried to bring and get help from. But yet, God had already deemed this person a sinner. And this is what I'm trying to get you to understand, that you can't call on somebody to help you out before you call on the Lord. And the reason why I know that, because when this king wanted to use this king, this other king went and found him a prophet or prophets that would lie for him. And he used uh, them to give a good report to the children of Israel as opposed to the spirit of truth. That's what we are dealing with today. We see people that are trying to make the lie out of the truth and the truth out of a lie. Just like the children of Israel, we have become vulnerable to man's desire and not to the desires of the Lord. And I come to tell you that King Jehoshaphat relied on man to go into a battle with the king that God had warned him of, and he disobeyed God. But what I like about God is that he is good and his mercy endureth forever. And that's where we're at today in this text. Because if we're going to be delivered, it's going to be by the mercy of God, not by the hands of man. First, most of us are not even equipped to understand that God gives us serenity. And it's all found in the serenity prayer that we should keep in our prayer closet. For those of us, we, we know the serenity prayer because it says, God, grant me the serenity to accept the things that I cannot change and the courage to change the things that I can and the wisdom to know the difference. King Jehoshaphat, he didn't have the courage to trust God. And he didn't have the, the wisdom to accept what God had for him. And we are like that now because most of us don't trust what God has for us. 
I know that we've been waiting to see how this COVID-19 is going to play out and many are trying to do it their way. The results are that we are watching our fellow Christians fall off the face of this earth. And they're falling off like they never fell off before. And I am praying that we would just be able to call on our God because I believe that we have forgotten the basic solution to all of our trouble. And that is to praise the Lord from whom all blessings flow. So if you look at the 13th verse of the 20th chapter of the second Chronicles, you can see how it affected Judah because it tells us that not only it affected everyone, it talked about the little ones, the wives, and even the children, children. And if you can follow verse 14, you will see that God appointed the son prophet, Yahzeriel, to deliver the spirit of the Lord to the congregation. And I believe that the Spirit is upon me to deliver this message so that you would understand that the battle is not ours, it's the Lord's. And I want to tell you that in order for us to really understand this, we must understand as Christians that the Lord is using us to demonstrate that we can trust him. And because of that, he will see us through. Some of us might not make it before it's all over, but we have a wise God and a savior. And I believe he wants us to return to our belief, amen? Our belief and relying on him and him only. We did it through the hard times and we did it when we couldn't see our way through. And just like the children of Judah, who was afraid that the two warring nations would outnumber them and who eagerness to conquer and destroy them would negate their blessings that God had given them by delivering them from bondage and from the desert. And although this reoccurring theme in the Old Testament was sin and it caused the children of Israel to be split up by their disobedience. In other words, what I'm saying that now you had a uh, 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 children of Israel nation to the left, which was the north, and the children of, of, of Israel nation to the right, which was the south. And it was divided because they would not obey God's word. And if we are not careful, we will fall into the same trap. But what I like about the word of God, it gives us a bird eye view on how to avoid the pitfall of man. If you look at verse 15, the prophet's sons declare that they, that they should not be afraid nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude that threatened their existence. He, it said that he cried out in the midst of the congregation. And, he, and when he cried out, he said, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Let me say this again. The battle is not yours, but God. This COVID-19 battle is not ours. It's the Lord. And I come to tell you that we have no power over who gets it or who the Lord calls home. I believe that if we would praise him for what he's already done, it would be more than enough to put our praise over our panic. If you look back over the last few years, the last few months, even the last few weeks, you can begin to shout hallelujah because what God has already done and not only have he woke you up today, but he's keeping you doing this pandemic. And right there, that should be praise enough. And I know many of you all have what we call pre-existing conditions. Well, if you are one of those who had a heart attack, look at what God has done because you are still here. 
If you're one of those who had cancer, but you're still here, look what God has done for you. If you've ever been in a diabetic coma and you're listening to this message, you are still here. For those of you who have been depressed and you didn't want to live, you're still here. For those of you who nearly drank yourself to death, but you're still here. And for those who had pre-existing condition and, and, and caught COVID-19, uh, COVID-19 rather, you're still here. It wasn't because of your will, but his will. In other words, his will will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And that's all you need to put your trust in. And you, that's how you put your praise over your panic. Because when you look at verse 17, it says you need not to fight in whatever battle you're dealing with. It tells us to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord that is with you. Only when the children of Judah was obedient to the instructions of the Lord. Because when you read verse 21, you will find the word holiness has our Father which art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. It is the holiness of the Lord that will see us through this pandemic. It is the holiness that will keep his praise team on the battlefield to show the world that he is God and he's God all by himself. It is to show those who come against his people and those who want to use fear to confuse his people and believing they need to depend on man. I come to tell you, if God is for you, who could be against you? Whether you are Democrat or Republican, whether you be on the right or on the left, whether you are black or white, I want you to know that all things work together for the good, to them that love God, to them that are called according to his purpose. So when you look at verse 22, this is when they began to sing and to praise because the Lord began to fight their battle. And just like what he did for the children of Judah, he will do the same for those who continue to praise and worship him in truth and in the spirit. Just imagine when your enemies come up against you or they plot against you or they scheme together for your demise when they scandalize your name, when, when your friends leave you, when your family turn their back on you, our folks write you off. You better learn how to praise God from whom all blessings flow. The children of, of Judah went into battle and praise and worship. They had their best praise team on the field. Because when you give God your best praise, watch what he will do. He will give you rest in a weary land. He will be your battle ax and he will destroy your enemies. And then for some of us, we have learned that no weapon that comes against us shall prosper. If you learn how to praise him first, you will see what the children of Ju Judah saw. They saw two of their enemies take each other out. They were afraid that they were outnumbered. But I come to tell you that if God is for you, don't worry about the extreme right or the extreme left. Don't worry about the coronavirus. And if you should fall to either one of them, 
I know someone that will give you room in his kingdom. And that kingdom was started a long time ago. And the way you get into his kingdom is when you confess with your mouth that Jesus, Jesus, he's Lord, and believe in your heart that he died and he was resurrected. The Bible says you shall be saved. And I want to tell you that when you do all of that, that means that your name will be written in the book of the Lamb. It has your elevation date to meet the king. And when you meet the king, it will be forever and ever. Because his word says, now unto him that's able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless in the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. That means he's a right now God. And whatever you're going through, he's already worked it out. And that's why you don't have to worry about tomorrow. Because tomorrow will take care of yourself if you believe in Jesus. Because see, one Friday evening on on old rugged cross, he gave his life so we may have life and life more abundantly. Not only he gave his life, but I come to tell you that he stayed in the borrowed tomb for three whole days. And while he was in that borrowed tomb, I want you to tell you that he did do something for you and me. He bound up Satan so that he wouldn't have any power over us. But then when he rise, he rose early, early, early in the morning. And when he rose early Sunday morning, I want to tell somebody he had power in all hands. And, and that means that whatever you need, he has. If you need healing, he has that. If you need deliverance, he has that. If you need peace, so my sisters and brothers, I'm glad that I looked at this message because I learned how to put my praise over my pattern. I don't pattern for anything. Even when I get bad news, I, I begin to praise it. Because I found out when you praise it, uh -huh, when you really praise it, you're in his presence. Because I found out that when you praise him from whom all blessings come, hallelujah. It means that everything that have breath should praise him. It means that everyone on this earth who praise God, God has a place. He has a place that will give you blessings. And that's why somebody said a long time ago, when praises go up, the blessings come down. I truly believe that. I don't care what I'm going through. I've learned to praise my way through it. I've learned to preach my way through it. I've learned to pray my way through it. And sometimes that's what you have to do. You have to praise your way through whatever you're going through. And if that's not good enough, I come to tell somebody, you got to learn how to shout hallelujah at the loudest, even when things are going bad, learn how to give them glory. Even when you don't feel like it, learn how to say, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And then when you can't even talk, learn how to wave your hands. When you wave your hands, God, he can understand. He knows that you call it. Amen. I hope you find this message for you in this moment. And I pray for those who do not know him. Let us pray. 
eternal God, our Father, we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to pray and to come to your throne of grace and mercy. Father God, there's been so much going on. We ask, Lord, that you would bless the bereaved family, Father God, especially Brother Watkins, Father God. He lost his wife, and we pray, Father God, that, Lord, that you would comfort him. Lord, there's other bereavement, Lord, that we don't even know about, Father God, but you do. And Lord, we ask that you would receive, Lord, their souls, Father God, unto you. We are praying, Father God, for our nation. Father God, we ask, Lord, that you would bless those, Father God, who are struggling, Father God. Lord, give them wisdom, especially those on the right and those on the left. We're praying, Father God, for our trusted leaders. We pray, Lord, that you would just give them, Lord, wisdom. And Father God, then we pray, Lord, Father God, so that our nation could come together. So that Lord, that we could be one in the spirit. In Jesus name, amen. I thank you. Uh, this is Pastor Shannon from Appalachia Shoals Missionary Baptist Church where we are one in the spirit. And for our members, I want you to know that I am doing quite well. Uh, I thank you for all of your prayers. We are going to continue to be on the battlefield. In Jesus name, amen. I thank you for uh, listening to us. We pray that you will uh, find this message uh, that will bless you for today and not only today, but for the rest of the week. And I pray that it will hold a uh, true in your life. Amen.